Right, this is our last time here at the Pro League with us three. So, uh, spoilers. Let's... Yeah, well, you know, man, <laughs> I'm full of them. Here we go. Oh, man, I didn't mean to hit you with that. Oh, it's all good, bro. It's all good. Look at this. The little drop down through the ladder from Heroic, and Dupree is holding it, but he's just looked away. The timing could not be better for Nico, even if he tried, man. He's got no idea that Dupree was just holding this, and Dupree does go back and check it the second time around. Now, with a lot of players on this flank, that might look great for Heroic, but it's going to leave you with just two inside of the A site. And with Dupree still holding the wrap, it's not like these lurking players are going to be able to do anything about the bulk of the Astralis forces here at the ramp. Astralis looking like they want to go back and try and fight this, unaware as to just how many players there are here. Oh, S-Tag, he was wider than Stan was ready for. Dupree was peeking closer. S-Tag goes in for more, doubling down and dominating Heroic on the back line. They can just back up into B. The bomb is running for it in this five on two. Tess is still stuck and Device does see him. Tucked in on the boost, going to back up and run towards the actual site where the action's going on. It's B. There is one man here in time, Borup. He's been pretty damn good in the Pro League so far. Had a rough series yesterday, but this is a good time to show up. S-Tag drops him with his third kill of the round, and Tess is now stuck alone, dinked off the angle. That U2 is not going to come into play, and Astralis, they have shown up in this pistol. That they have. They've done it in numbers, too. The five alive. And they're going to keep it that way, too. S-Tag gets the last kill on Tessas, and we see this round go in the way of Astralis. Now, you start to wonder, now, Astralis is T-side. That's uh, a few question marks around that one, Hugo. Yeah, there have been, I think, if anything, it's like more leaning towards Heroic and how good have they been at shutting teams down on the CT side of this map recently. So, yeah, I mean, even when we saw that series the other day between Astralis and Heroic, it was a 2-0. It was Vertigo to start off for Heroic, what has been a pretty go-to map for them. And, uh, and yeah, they, they had a lock-in on that CT side, only giving away one round in the first, or in the second half. Buy up for Astralis though, right? They've already punched things in with some AKs and some SMGs running up ramp as S-Tag. Tess is waiting, but he's got to smoke for that Molotov. Giving it away though, no teammates smoking him this time. So Astralis know what they're up against. That's a great grenade for Tessas, but double nades back for Astralis. Dodged as Tessas hides inside of the smoke. I like that. He doesn't drop the smoke just below him. He drops it to the side, giving him a little bit more room to maneuver, keeping him alive for the time being. That might fade as a Molotov comes in. KD, does he smoke oh, him? Yes, he does. Ooh. And no more HEs for Astralis. They've got to push him. And they got to be aware of this player at Sandbacks too, are they? That's the big question. Doesn't seem like anyone's really holding that angle tightly, except for Nico holding the angle over the scaffold. That's going to find some sick dig action right here so far from the side of Heroic. Oh, he's gone all according to plan. Just S tag and a one on four. No bomb in hands. Does have an AK. Oh, will actually lose his head in the process. Nico with a tremendous round. Four frags for himself on the back of a deagle. Ha ha. That was great. That was great for Heroic, man. Like the re-aggression off the back of Astralis starting to sweat. You know, when that second Molotov comes in and Kadian smokes it off, Nico decides to get aggressive and Astralis is so... Well, some of them are so focused on Tessis, but some of them aren't. Glaive walks right onto the bomb site, trying to get a kill while all that is going on. And he just gets shot at from the back. So very weird round to start. Heroic already flipping things on their head and putting Astralis on Deegs. What are they going to be able to do with these Deagles, right? They're down here towards the bottom of the ramp, but right now it's contested by Heroic. Looking like they might try and throw a player up into the boost. Now, this boost can sometimes feel like you're just uh, a bit of a sitting duck. So let's see what happens as Glaive is the man at throwing up there. 
Glaive actually gets over and now hides in this little cubby. They would have heard him like dropping, but I don't know if they if they, if they know that he's already this deep. Now with the smoke's going in, that is a position that can be taken by the Danes, or at least one set of the Danes. <laughs> a lot of Danes here. Yeah, they would have loved a flash to pop Glaive up further, but unfortunately only a smoke remains on this T side. And at this point, not only do Heroic have three players here, but they have open lines of sight. Magic's moving in, and Kadian just takes him down. Even if he didn't, Borob could swing, and he will. With a trade onto another, Dupree gone on the stairs, and Heroic clean sweep on that B bomb site. There were three there. They were very ready for Astralis. And now we just have to go through the motions. Eco round coming out for the T side, as they can't afford a whole lot. Yeah, there ain't a whole lot to show in the bank, about, bank account. Piggy Bank has been cracked. While Tess is not necessarily going, you know, super crazy on the scoreboard right now, he's definitely been one of the influential players in this game thus far. All the attention he brought out to the sandbags, finding himself in a flurry of skirmishes here and out. Speaking of skirmishes, that's going to be over here at the B site. Four deep for Astralis. They start to work their way up the B ramp. Acadian's on such a fast flank. He didn't buy nades because he knew he was going to push this, but it's being held by a Glock. Device can't get that kill, but he can we'll tell his team turn. to turn around and deal with this one, and they will. Magis and Glaive combine for one, and that's only an SMG given over, but Astralis now know that that A site might be up for the taking. Heroic rotated off off the back of Cadian's push, and now they have to run back in. Grenades coming down for Tessas does a little bit of damage, but Astralis still with the bomb outside B right now. Yeah, and Astralis show us there how to use the Cypher Cam in a legal way, right? They just hold the <laughs> flank, they calm that over, and then they deal with KD and pushing. So now, these Glocks, they've got an MP9. That's not really something you say like, yes, yes, we got the MP9, but it's still something, and it's better than nothing. That with the Deagle as well on Dupree, and maybe there's a chance they can look for a bomb plant here inside of the A site. Nico and Tessa is going to be holding on the other side. Right now, Astralis, they're just waiting. Waiting to see if someone comes their way. And that has not happened. So eventually, it's going to fall to them to make this first move. On plant should be doable here. They've got to get past Nico and Tessa's, though, scoped up on the org. E trade for device. Nico with the spray. He's got two. Can he find a third? S tags dropped. And that's the plant denied. All of them lining up for Nico. Stounds here in time for a final one. And heroic. Clean sweep on that anti eco. It does get a bit dicey, a bit dangerous. I like how Astralis really bleed that round for anything they can get. But still no extra money. Just a couple of kills. And you got to imagine. I mean, if you're Cadian and you round the corner, like, oh, yeah, I'm about to have this sick 3K <laughs> from the back. Nope. Information was transferred. Yeah, great the device doesn't shoot right. That Glock wouldn't have killed Cadian. Would have only just alerted him and let him run device down, likely. Double orb, man, early in this map. Heroic not waiting around at all. Astralis won't have one of their own. Down and Cadium armed and dangerous. Barb's pushed below B, hiding behind the sandbags. Oh, that name. It's actually fine. Bounces a bit, but no one there for Astralis to receive. Tess says, could it re aggress here as the smoke fades? No one's looking at him at the moment. That Molotov comes down. He hears the tick of damage and he knows what to expect. Magic coming in with a peep, though. Tess does take uh, down one with him. That's worthwhile at least. And now Heroic, no numbers up on this A site. They're going to get a lot of information from that push. It's 4v4. And Astralis just now considering, like, hey, you know what? Maybe we don't go to A site. Then there's this other guy on the other side of things in Heroic. His name's Nico. He's pretty much been everywhere, every time Astralis have tried to do something. Multi kills galore. Vice. Well, trying to penetrate the A site, loses his life to Stown, one of those AWPs that we so far mentioned. Here comes the B play from Astralis. Good util for Barb. He's going to stall the plant out, but Magis actually goes in front of the gens for it. They've got a smoke to allow that, and Heroic have to set up for the retake. They have the kit. Utility's still already diminishing, and Astralis has set up inside a B. Not much utility left here, Harry. Really, not a lot. You're going to be relying on just these individuals, and Magis, well, he's good for one. That's it. 
removed and into this two on two. There's the swing from Dupree and it's left onto S tag in a 1v1. Back at the ramp, there is a smoke for the bomb. That gets dropped by Nico, and he's just oh, sticking baby. it. He's still on the bomb. S Tag oh, needs no. to land this shot, and he can't. Nico just sticking it straight up once again. The hero in the round for Heroic, and this is a really good look from him individually. Yeah, yeah nine and one on the sixth round. Like, that's not too bad, all things considered, for Nico. They used to call him Budget Nico, but who's laughing now? Ha 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 ha. I wonder I wonder if S Tag even knew where the bomb was planted, right? You know, not only did he at least look like he thought it was a fake the first time around, but yeah, not a default plant thanks to Borob's utility, and it forces into a nice awkward spot where Nico can sneak it off in the smoke. It's not one that Astralis is going to be all too happy about losing. They come back in with a vengeance by Tess is pushing ladder. What a play. He's made the drop silently, sped up on this flank, but we know from the pistol, Astralis have been holding for G3 coming around the corner, and he is very aware. There's still another man to worry about. It's Nico trying to stall this flank out, not wanting to give away the info too early, hoping uh, Astralis rotate into him outside of B, and he's got Glaive on rotation, going to the other side of the map. Astralis know what's up, and they're just going to commit into this A site. Oh, and Cadian lighting Ooh. them up, man. They're not getting anywhere near it. It's Dupree and Device left up alive. Their numbers dwindling. And this bomb dropped out in the open. Device is going to tap Cadian out of the round. There's still a minute left, right? So there's still plenty of time. But with two players ready to peek from CT, Device spamming down Nico. Almost gets away with that kill. And he's going to try and get this bomb down in the smoke. Dupree trying to watch over his teammate. Bomb plant comes in. Astralis may be in with a chance. But that is a great flash from Nico. Allows Borup to get that kill. And it's left Device all alone now. Will he get paranoid about that tap on the bomb? Hasn't shown himself up yet, but there's the swing from Borup to cement a fifth for Heroic. And man, is there anything Nico can't do at this point? He sets his teammates up brilliantly with a flashbang to get them back into that round. In, in rounds gone by, he's been putting up multi-kills, you know, grabbing defuses. He's having a great start. Cadian as well with some promising orping down towards ramp. I think it was Zipex who said, enjoy it while it lasts. I think that's the Ooh. quote now. How are you pulling Heroic. that out in round six? Yeah. Interesting. It's I like it. looking like it's lasting right about now. This is a very, very good start for them. Stralis, they're playing the long game, though. You know these guys aren't going to go down or give up without a fight, without multiple maps, and maybe looking for all three in this series, especially with that sneaky overpass pick coming out from Astralis. They still don't have the orb, man. They've still been left lacking in terms of the sniper. And Cadian has well wielded his well on that A-bomb site. 5-1. The tactical pause for Astralis trying to calm things over, fix things. What would their solution be? Let's go and see. Back to B. And yeah, not the start that Astralis was looking for, but Dupree has other plans in this round, it seems. <laughs> to run right into Bora. Oh, he didn't know he was lower. Tess is talking to lower, has pushed through down on the ramp. They've right, gone right past him. He has no idea. That smoke is down. S Tag looks aware, looks concerned at the possibility. And this might pay off for him. Tess is, oh, he looks away as the fade comes through. And Tess is, gets away with one. He's so cheeky at getting a, a, a one for one trade on this A bomb site. It's at least, again, got more information. The bombs come to join Astralis as they group up for another assault. Heroic with only Kadian here currently. Yeah, and look how punctual of Counter-Strike that we're seeing right here. Just very rigid when it comes down to making sure that the trades are here, making sure that players are in the right place. And I don't want to say that's because everybody's Danish, but it's possible. These domestic matchups are always some of the most fun we have in Counter-Strike, no matter the country. But what helps is when both of these teams are, you know, rock solid on the rankings right now. Yeah. As just goes for the plant, just going to tap it, maybe bait out some grenades from the side of Heroic. Oh! Instead, he gets spammed down by Borup. A fatal error. Majisk. IRL blue oh, screen, God. and so has Glaive, just standing in the middle of the site. How was he going to pull that one off? It doesn't matter. Borup 
The man with the plan and the action in the round. Six to one for Heroic. That is unlucky for Majisk, right? Knowing that in a lot of these rounds, Heroic have been throwing HEs and mollies towards the plant spots on both bomb sites. He tries to fake it out and move to the corner plant instead. Heroic starts spamming the corner plant as he walks into it. And then, I love the re-aggression. They know the bombs drop. They know they're a man up. And Heroic go, let's just gun it. Hold W into the site. Glaive almost catches him off guard, but plant in his hand. And yeah, he gets put down. Flash into middle for Astralis and the orb to start off. Yeah, they drop a flash. I thought, hey, you know what? Maybe I'll get away. Nah, Nico, go ahead and do what you gotta do, man. You've been on fire the whole game. Ooh. Might as well feed him a little bit more. Dupree left in a one on five with just a deagle. A round not designed for Astralis to win. Oh, and Dupree <laughs> through the wall, deleted by Stown. Seven to one, heroic, a flawless round. And Nico still 13 to one. Like, that just keeps on racking up. My word. This is uh, a bit of a bit of a rough beginning for Astralis, but a great start for Heroic. And this is kind of exactly what we wanted, you know, like this is it, right? We wanted a nice yeah. start from Heroic. We want this to go the distance. And with them looking so confident here on Vertigo, I think there's a very, very good chance of that. Kadian and Tessez looking to get stuck in down here at the ramp. They are smoked off, but Tessez leaps by. Device won't have seen him as a result, and he does get spammed a bit. The nade doing even more follow-up damage, but Device <laughs> still here. They would have heard the tag on the molly. That's why Tessez is now spamming this short side. Yeah, the Battle of A-Ramp. Basically just rename this entire map that. We are seeing attempts at B in mid, but with how many times they've been shut down, Astralis are going back to the old familiar. The old faithful at a bomb site. Dupree lurking B alone. Four players for Astralis at the top of A. Molly on the sandbags. Don't know if they've already done it or not. One will come down eventually, and no one's smoking yet, so it's safe. Flash in for Tessez. Maybe a bit early. Astralis is still holding. Still waiting for this, and Estag has got the kill to open up. That's a massive opener for Astralis. Now the numbers thinned here for Heroic. Cadian a little bit stuck. If those smokes come down on the site, he'll have to play for short. They try and bait his shot with a fake flash, and Cadian holds his own. Jiggle, jiggle device. There it is. Uh-oh. He's got help, though. It's Nico. Imagine that. Right place, right time. Again. And Kadian's able to pivot away from paying attention to the scaffold. Turns oh. around, and Nico has picked up where he left off. Just Dupree, who has been left on the other side of the map the entire round, and with 20 seconds, you can only imagine as to what he can accomplish. Yeah, man, we're often saying, like on Vertigo games, oh, the life of a B player, talking about the CT side where you lose A and that B player is just saving. Well, Dupree, life of a B player, but it's not where you usually expect it. Astralis having to save one rifle in this round, and Heroic just running the board right now, writing the script, re-aggressing at every possible opportunity. And I like the fact that, you know, even though Tessas goes down, it, it doesn't scare Heroic for going back for more. When Kadian gets pushed off with the orb and the smoke comes down, Nico just goes right through it, as you can see, and gets away with multi-kills again. What a tank. 16-1 and one on Nico. Strahler is still desperately clawing for a second round. To find it, they'll use a second timeout. Man, the last time we saw Astralis in a grand final at an ESL Pro League was Season 8. That was in 2018. If you remember that event, they beat Liquid. They went on to win the Intel Grand Slam the first season of it. You know, it was like a very momentous time period. Best team of all freaking time. Yeah, I, I, but then since then, they've always been cut short of making these finals, usually by a bunch of guys known as Mouse Sports. Today, it's looking to be heroic. 8-1 up right now, as they are still storming ahead. No contest from Astralis yet. Yeah, and you, you know, you know Heroic have already won this series just days ago in dominant fashion, so while you might like to think that that would light a flamer below Astralis, right now, Heroic are putting them out. Set up below B again. Trying to avoid those early nades, boost up for Dupree, the one right in this round, and he gets spammed! That, that's, just, that's just luck. That's just a great guess for Borob. As Dupree goes for the jump, he hits the shot. Beautiful stuff. Everything working wonders for Heroic, and a double nade back in will further brutalize Astralis. Out they go, back to A, where Tessas has all the control. Yeah, for Astralis, they're doing a pretty good job of maintaining the underside of the map, the first story of the map. <laughs> However, known as T spawn. Yes. However, the bomb site's being on the other 
Opposite side, looking oh. at this crazy charge from Device. A max oh. oh. has three. He looks for a fourth, and he's going to get it with a deagle. Wow. That, that was hot stuff from Tessus. Full hazard indeed. Not the start for Dupree, and not the ending for Astralis. Or Glaive, for that matter. Zero, two, and nine. That, that timing was just beautiful for, for Borrow. And then Tessus, he, he goes back in. I think he realizes off that jump, they're too close, and he likely can't escape. So he goes, fine, I'll full send. I'll push right in. That Molotov burns out device who runs through to his death. Danish fans out in full force. How do you even choose who to support at this point? Well, I think if you were never a Stralis fan, but then, you know, Heroic comes along and they start doing good, probably time to jump ship. I think Danes have it easy, man. With so many great teams and so many great personalities, you just pick whichever one's the best at any point in time. And it's like, that. I'm fans of them now. Oh, no, mate. I, you know, I go for Heroic. Not Astralis. What was that? It's like Australian and British, but then also... Not. Yeah, Some neither sort of like at the same time. Weird hillbilly mix in there, yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. Stown, they might know. And now, if I had to guess, they definitely know. <laughs> Yeah, he Look tries how... to throw a flash and it's just nothing there. They've already backed away. Ooh. The smoke, enough to scare Astralis away from repetition that is hitting the A site and getting denied time and time again. This is a great call. The one time they've actually had a B plant where, you know, Estag lost that one-on-one -on -one to the defuse of Nico. It was the same spot where Astralis walk away silently and Borup realizes in middle when it's already too late. This is a great call for Astralis as they know Heroic aren't going to re-aggress until that smoke that's down drop fades. And now they've realized, but it's all too late. Borup with a great kill. Astralis with the bomb site though, and that deep Molotov keeps Nico out for the retake. Finally, a chance at a round for Astralis, but Heroic are coming in with four. Keep spamming it, Katie, and I believe... <laughs> He's hearing me. I love it. Nico on the other side of the smoke, 16 and one. No one has been able to stop him yet, so will it finally happen? The smoke fades and Glaive, his first kill in the game is on to someone who is 16 and one on the other side. Now that victory is short-lived for Glaive. But for Cadian in a 1v2, it might have to just be the round. He's got in, he's gotten close, but a man on the generators has got it dead to rights. It's Dupree there to solidify that second on the board for Astralis. Yeah, and finally the first AWP Astralis have got in this game, right, picked up at the end of the round. I like how they uh, uh, identified the problem at the last B post plant was that they let Heroic, or they gave Heroic the room, as you often do, uh, to get on that bomb. This time it's not the same case. Astralis fight for the site and they play aggressive in the post plant. Cutting Heroic as they come through those smokes. Perhaps Astralis a little traumatized from a few rounds past. Yeah. You know? Smoke defuse, never going to leave a good taste in your mouth. Double orb, though. Heroic, no, it's been picked up against them, and so they will wield two of their own. Oh, oh that's not fair. That head-to-head -head has been so back and forth between Tessus and their stag over on A-Ramp, fighting for these early picks. Okay. Well, eventually Dupree had to win something at B, right? And there it is, Glaive as well, in with another. And a, th and a second to the tally in this round. Three in total for him. And that's opened up the path to a B rotation. Heroic, they might just have to save in this one here. Two on four retake, never really going to work out, especially not with Glaive. For all they know, could be deep within CT, right? You cut off all the information over here towards this B side of the map. So even if they did want to go for it, they'd be so slow rotating into position that a lot of time is going to tick away from this bomb. Woo, look at us go. Now we're inside of this site, right? Astralis all stacked up, not giving that room over again. And it is just this save call for Heroic. They get away with the AWP. Tessa is going to grab that. And three on the board for Astralis. Glaive, you know, went from zero to hero in these last few rounds. Yeah. He he made that 4v4 retake a four on three for Astralis. In that round there, he secures two B entries to get them in, or B in mid, but still. And so with all five players, you know, kind of finding their footing slowly but surely for Astralis, maybe there's still a chance at a, at a decent half yet. Yeah, you're gunning for that 9-6. You would hate to see your opposition get up to the dubs. Yeah, Glaive knows he has the freedom thanks to Dupree getting that smoke spam, right? It's drawn a B player closer to the site, and even though it actually pulls an A rotate off, Glaive catches him inside of Elevator. Double orb continues for Heroic. One saved, one bought.
device. We haven't really had to say his name a whole lot on this T side, but now he's got one of his own again. Dupree throwing A flashes back from T-Spawn with a short smoke down on deep ramp. Keeps device out for now. Estrella set up outside of B. Now they have forgotten the bomb. Nah, you don't need that where you're going. <laughs> we'll see B if they site. go back for it. Whoever plants in the B site in their first day, come on, guys. I'm kidding. There's a chance here, but not if they go for the boost and, well, bore up decides, hey, you know what? I think I'll shoot at this piece of wood randomly. Yeah, they might just be planning to double back towards A anyway with two players still at the bottom of ramp. They know that they've had to wait out the utility on the A site. Cool nades. Big Ooh. nades, actually. Dupree with the final kiss of death on a bore up. They've been doing their homework after all. Yeah, the thing that's kind of cool about that is they throw two from the left side and then one from the right. And so if you're even holding there, you only see two nades coming your way. They're not landing like the closest they can. So you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm chill. But then, you know, there's actually that secret like right hook coming in from the other side. And that's the old one, two onto Borup to open this round up. But Heroic, they have read this well. They see those nades come in and they don't buy it for a second. They stack in this A site. They're even pulling Stown away from B Ooh, and a tag okay. through the smoke for Kadian. Not the killing blow. This Molotov can be used to delay the plant. And with 30 seconds left, oh, that can't make. Oh, it's Ow. not spread. How's oh, S tag gotten away with that? Molotov spread it, if, you know, away from the direction you've thrown them, so it actually spreads further towards the ramp rather than closer to the plant. It's a little bit deep. Yeah, it's the luck of the Danish. That's what they always say. Retake on the cards. Tess is going to go ahead and dump a Molotov here towards Sandbags. That's going to prompt the smoke to come out from device. He'll be safe for the time being. Glaive. Firing in from the ramp. And so far, the frags are going in the way. Well, they're going back and forth. It's Glaive with two, and we find ourselves in a precarious one on two. Kadian might just try to stick this. They're spamming him off. He taps the bomb, backs away, looks for the frags, instead finds one. Can he find the second one to get the defuse? <laughs> the time is just two ticked. Oh, and somehow, Dupree lives to tell the tale in the next round. He's going to salvage an AWP. He's going to be able to pass that back over to Device. But yeah, there's the nade stack over in the B site early on in the round. Yeah, and Glaive continuing to come alive, right? Three kills in that round, locking it down, shot through the smoke, even peeking with only a few bullets left in the mag, and uh, takes one down with five left. Lovely stuff. Now that, that's the camera angle of the season right there. It's a fist bump cam, but also half and half. Nine to four. Yeah, and Astral is finally breaking the money of Heroic. So this is their chance, right, at that 9-6 half. This is them kind of getting into the swing of things and looking to solidify a very, very recoverable scoreline here. S-Tag going to open the round up by dealing with Nico. However, creeping and crawling down beneath the construction was one. That was Stown. And the bomb now dropped there as well. It might be a three on two for Astralis, but they've got to recover this bomb. And Kadian not in the mood to give it over. Dupree still here at 16 points of health, and Kadian, I don't think he knows at oh. all. He's scoped up at ramp, and Dupree swings and deals with him. Five on the board for Astralis as we head into the last round of this first half. The money is gone for Heroic. And so, you know, when this was 9-1 down, it looked very, very bleak for Astralis. It looked like there was no way out. But then through, like, perseverance and breaking down this CT economy slowly but surely over the, over the course of these last few rounds, they might still make a half out of this one yet. Yeah, six is respectable. Six is enough, right? Like, often this map is T-sided, but in a game like this, I imagine Astralis have got the answers in the second half as well. How many ideas were over thrown to the table? Push down the ramp again, this time favoring no one. Heroic trade equally. If anything, Astralis are fine with that. They may lose the control, but they can execute into B soon. Glaive jumping up, not playing the wood this time. Flash forward. Player on default to deal with his Borup. He's already been spotted and a little bit screwed as the Molly pushes him out. He takes a kill and burns to death. Still a good hold nonetheless. S-Tag in middle, looking to come in late. Cut off these rotations. Now, Stown ain't having none of it. He feels it. He is ready and he's got the kill through the wall as well. Grabbing an AK, but he can't afford to waste time. They don't have a lot of it and no kit on this retake. Backpack spotted. Nico shoots. Glaive will respond through the smoke and now he's stuck in a very awkward one on two. Yeah, an excellent Molotov right there. Stops Heroic from just jumping all over the planner and stopping this round from Astralis. Now down to a 201, Nico. With the plays of the game thus far, with the frags to his name. 
Gonna dump a Molotov there in the site, smoke off the bomb, dump whatever remaining utility. This is the last round, he's gotta go for it. He's gonna tap it, but not stick it. He looks for the frags, and they're not there. Majisk puts it into the half. We see ourselves going to a break with Heroic up nine to six, but it's Trollis. Well, I fear they have just been awakened. We'll be right back, everybody. Hermit. Yeah, yeah, I don't care, no, I don't care, yeah, yeah, I don't care, I said, cause baby, every fucking song is playing, you should know that I don't give a single fuck about you and your words, all the times you let to me, I try to notes, I don't know what to say. I feel on top of the world, I feel on top of the world right now. I feel on top of the world, I feel on top of the world right now. I always wanted the world, I wanna conquer the world right now. I feel on top of the world, I feel on top of the world right now. I call the shots on the man with the plot and we only go bombs away. And no one protecting my mind is a weapon, that's why I'm a dominate. Taking advantage of every second, now I ain't got time to waste. They all tryna sign my name, they want me to sign my name. Count me your blessing while I count that in my windows. We take 50. And hundreds and throw them up to the ceiling Everything I envision, now everybody gon' witness Only difference between us is I ain't stop till I finish yeah. Distracted, your best, my average, there's a reason for that. That's a fact, so they snapping back, mad at the fact that I don't have a backup plan, I need that. Outworking everybody when I relax, so I ain't tripping about none of y'all feedback. Air that wonder when I'm gonna peek at. And that's why you count your blessing while I count that in my winnings. We take fifties and hundreds and throw them up to the ceiling. Everything I envision, now everybody gon' witness. Only difference between us is I ain't stop till I finish. Yeah. I feel on top of the world, I feel on top of the world. Fifties and hundreds and throw them up to the ceiling. Everything I envision, now everybody gon' witness. Only difference between us is I ain't stop till I finish. Yeah. I feel on top of the world. I feel on top of the world right now. I feel on top of the world. I feel on top of the world right now. I always wanted the world. Filled with great Danes, as that is some great results here in the first half. Now, let me remind you that on the line here is a grand final appearance. It's either going to be Heroic or Astralis joining Navi in those grand finals. Welcome back, everybody. This is the end of the road of the ESL Pro League Season 12 playoffs. My name, well, that's not important. What you need to know is Nico inside of the server has absolutely been dominating Astralis and has had quite the first half. You can see 17 and 5. But now we're going to switch sides. We're going to see what they've got to offer on their T side. And it starts out at the B-bomb site. Yeah, definitely a faster approach to begin, but from the spam that's going through, it's not a commitment. Making noise below B as matches aggresses, and maybe to his own demise. Deep smoke for S-Tag, uh, S-Tag trying to cut off the rotation. Magis pushing into his own death. A little bit flashed out there by Glaive. Testers, will he check close? And they comes out, and S-Tag caught switching that's weapons. It. It's all the kills for Heroic and the A-Site included. Yeah, Device is going to have to do something really special here. Effectively in a 1v4, goes above the smokes, but that wall is already down, and that's going to cut off the site, allow for this plant to come through for Heroic. 
They've even got more utility still. Barb can re-smoke one side of the site. Kadian's going to molly boost. No one up there just yet. Astralis already backing up, looking to save their armor in this pistol round. I think the moment you get Molotov in and retaking the pistol round in the 2v4, you're like, <laughs> yeah, we can't do this. So they just have to back away and save. And that's not a that's not a nice call to have to make, giving this pistol round over. Yeah. The, the only way this call is worth it is if they actually don't take any damage now, right? Like the, the idea behind it is having your head armor in that follow-up for far less money. So even here, Dupree's going to lose a, a good bit of armor to the bomb. Device getting away with one, but even following up, not taking a shot. Dupree, yeah, he loses some armor. Not what you would have wanted, but not the end of the world, right, for Astralis. It was still a lost round from the get-go, and they knew it. Heroic baited them in with that B approach, only for Astralis to push into the position Heroic were waiting for. 10 to 6. Pissed around on top of a favorable half. Certainly going to put Heroic in a good place in their map pick in the series. Yeah, and in case you didn't join us for the pre-show, the MSI Mystery Box is still up for grabs. Head over to at ESLCS's Twitter. Check out the latest tweets and get your answer in. And be creative. We like to know that you're a real human and not a robot. None of that robotic-ish. Meet more. Notice five HEs on Astralis. Plan is to stop the bomb plant on that A site by the looks of things. Vice actually won't even upgrade the armor, so expecting a lot of AKs, and he's right in his assumption. Three on the side of Heroic, and again, a very slow T side start. Both these teams have been doing it up on the A ramp, creeping and crawling, not giving much away. You want your information, you've got to take a risk for it, is what they're telling Astralis. And you can see how they're realizing at any point players could peek close on the site. They could catch them with nades out. Some will be going towards the short side, whereas Heroic, they run right onto the bomb site. Kadian and Stown opening up with two S-Tag falls as well. And that might just be the round through and through. Yeah, I'm not convinced that Astralis are going to be able to get back in this game just yet. I mean, it's possible. Sooner or later, we will see some sort of weaponry coming out, but it's going to be another save here for Astralis and 11 for Heroic. They're on top of the world right now, Harry. Yeah, man, that was a, that was an Astralis, you know, like five nade by, and they do 150 damage with them, like spread across five players. That's like, that's probably an all-time low for Astralis in terms of how much damage the nades get away with. Yeah, the timing of that swing for Heroic was really good, right? Like, they get top ramp, even though Astralis are considering it. Heroic don't do what teams often do, which is, like, line up smokes, set up flashes, make it pretty clear. No, they just go from silent to four players strafing wide right. And so Astralis, they just have to dump what they can, knowing that if they don't drop the grenades now, they'll never get a chance to. And so, yeah, you take what damage you can get. But zero kills in the round. Heroic making money on their anti-ecos. Always a nice bonus. Now we have the bonus. As Astral is still yet to invest in the CT side, waiting for that loss to kick up one more. Oh, device. Gonna hear those nades getting thrown. Gonna take a little peek down, but gonna try and remain hidden instead. Magisk, look at where he's found himself. All right. Luckily enough, Kadian is also looking as well. He wanted the dig and then realized he had his own. Is one I made earlier. Oh, he's trying Canadian, to fake footsteps. Little yeah. beta. Look at this. Trying to give the illusion that they're making noise on their way up. Now, is he going to check the boost? He certainly has already demonstrated some uh, big brainness here. Look how ready they are. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Glaive gets beheaded. And so now this might just be that nice clean round you were hoping for if you're heroic. Nico doing everything he can to make it not that. We'll just run away from B. And so the A play going to come through largely uncontested. Bit of damage done, but that's the extent of this round really for Astralis. It's the pistol round replay. The save from Dupree and Device. It's not like they're even getting away with armor on Device. He's just got a CZ. And there's no guns dropped either for them to retrieve. Device more acting like a bodyguard for Dupree inside of that B-bomb site. 
Rug, no need to hunt, right? Like Nico could go for it. I, I like it when teams do this, but they, they know they're going to upgrade the Mac 10, or at least if they are going to upgrade the Mac 10 next round, Nico could throw it to someone with full health who could just run around and look for that kill, knowing you're not giving anything away and you're only gaining money and breaking that uh, economy further for Astralis. But Rug, they're just going to keep five live. Good for the stats, good for the cash. 12-6. And finally, after all of this downtime for Astralis, after all of these rounds where they can work out what Heroic are doing and have a think about as, has, how they want to approach their first rifle round, it is just around the corner. Um, we won't request that people remember to bring a shirt. I think that's uh, that's step one. <laughs> yeah, Trace, put it on. But, but yeah, no, he, you got to wear a shirt, man. This angle for Magistic is great. We saw it in the game the other day for Astralis where his head actually isn't exposed. If you look at this from the third person, when you crouch, your model moves his head a little bit. Uh, Magisk is using that to his benefit. If I want to kill him, they've got to spam him. Cool angle, but is, some, is it something that Heroic could prepare for? They seem ready for anything nowadays. Four on the A site for Astralis. They are already reading into this well, but can they put a stop to it? Yeah, reading is one thing, but reacting quite another. And they try to be the first to take action in this round. They flash for a ramp peak, but it's Nico, the first man to grace that scoreboard. Bora following up and S-Tag hidden in this site smoke. They're actually going past Whoa. him, and that's Device just wow. left out of the round. s going to have to try and do it all, and he's only good for one. And Dupree, our thoughts go out to him. That B-site is feeling awful lonely this time of year. He's left to rotate back in all alone, but very, very late here. Arriving in this 1v4. Doesn't have a kit either. Yeah, that B-bomb site definitely on the top 50. Worst terrace attractions of 2020. Pretty barren, pretty empty. There's not a whole lot of party to be had there. So Dupree's going to save this M4. There's a, like a meme template idea there. You know, you go like top three least explored places in the world or something. You go like bottom of the ocean, space, B-bomb site on Vertigo. Oh, you got to give away all your gold. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well... I'm just helping out. I'm helping Astralis social media try and make something pretty of this game right Ooh. now because it's 13 to 6 in favor of Heroic. Now, let, let's just spitball this a little bit here, Hugo, because we look at overpasses the next map, a map we didn't expect to see in the series, period. And now with Heroic, they're going to have to answer the call there. Yeah, we kind of hoped it would be there. It's one that Heroic ooh, ooh, frequent, but uh, Astralis, they've been saving it in their pocket for some time. They haven't shown it other than in a single match versus Spirit, and they tore them apart there. Very exciting stuff. It's been some time, and with this new roster, I can't wait to see what's coming through. But I'm not pretending this game is done just yet. Astralis, man advantage in this round. Even though S-Tag walks into the molly, he gets out alive for now. Smoke fades, and now he's got to commit to the fight. And low on HP, Tessas will be finished off. S-Tag gets out with 14 of his own. Heroic might just want to crunch this B-bomb site. It's all they've got. Two players grouping up towards that position. Still a lurker in mid. Stown could put up quite the calamity if he catches good timings on Astralis setting up in construction. A lot of that might rely on Heroic even getting the B pick and, and opening up a plantable round. They're going to boost up. Dupree playing AWP and now joined by Device. Yeah, Barb going to get flashed in for the peak. It's a good flash, but Dupree has Device's back out through mid. Stown. Now they know he's here. That nade could do damage. S-Tag has dodged it. Deacon from CT instead. Nico dealt with and Stown all alone. 1v5. Now a lot of these bodies are low on the other side. But even then, right, would require something absolutely unreal from Stown. He's going over towards B. Looking to make something of this for Heroic. At least maybe make it expensive. Oh. Too much noise being made and players set up in CT. Sees Astralis get to seven and they keep it flawless at that. 
Yeah, definitely not a scoreline you can counter Astralis out for, uh, from, yeah. and a flawless round like that is going to do so much for the confidence getting back into things. I like how Dupree plays anti-flash as well, right? He's sitting uh, behind the gens, not looking at anything until that pop comes through, and then he peeks off it. Well, I do see uh, a Lawrence Scott here on the fan cams, and, well, she's not really looking at us, but that's okay, too. I'm understanding that her and Chad are... Having a pizza party. Yes, I do see Chad as well, sitting on his sofa with the camera in the wide-angle shot. Living like what we'd say a normie lives like. Chad, make sure you save some of that pizza for me, man. I appreciate you. Thanks. It might be cold, Trace. This series has got some legs on it indeed, especially if Heroic take that map pick. Yeah, well, I was just thinking, like, this was actually designed to be a pizza party for your birthday, but it seems as though Chad's already started eating the pizza. Um... So we'll see if we can get you like a half a slice or maybe you got stuffed crust and maybe you just have oh. one, like some of that. Oh, nice. Just, yeah, just the crust. Just the kind of like half eaten. Well, Chad's going to eat the cheese out. So you just get the... <laughs> I mean, you do get the crust. Like, yeah, come yeah, on. Yeah. Let's, let's be fair to Hugo here. I can put whatever I want in it, right? Like it's uh, yeah. stuff your own crust. Yes, you can stuff your own crust. <laughs> you certainly can do that for your birthday. Oh, dear. Wow. Well, Cool, Harry. Right now. <laughs> this is Astralis getting their crust stuffed in the server as well, uh, they are falling behind still. But, you know, they, they get their first there and there and they keep it flawless. And that there is important. Look into the, uh, the grander scheme of Vertigo. Everything's back to normal now as that little tag pause runs dry. And we've got this double orb still in full swing between Device and Dupree. Now only two kits here for Astralis. So they're going to have to keep their wits about them as to where those get dropped. That's if they get dropped. Flawless round in the last, right? That's uh, already Ouch. setting the stakes high, but Dupree eats two nades. Like just straight up, too. Didn't even chew them. Just tried to swallow them. Oh, okay. Glaive through the smoke. One banging Cadian out of the round. Now Tessas again continues this bout between him and Estag on the A ramp. Winning it once more. He's come out very favorable in those A engagements, but Molotov's utility for Astralis send Heroic back for good reason. OHP, Heroic get out of there alive, but maybe not for long. Astralis are on the run. Glaive hunting these kills. Smoke comes down for his teammate. He can keep his gun out, and Heroic want to flash back in. They want to fight for this control. Glaive's blind. He's behind. They don't realize in the smoke. Tessas is blocked as well. Surely someone's going to realize, and Borup eventually does, saving his teammate's uh. life. That could have gotten dicey. Yeah, and you can tell he just wanted to be quiet about it, too. He thought he got away with murder right there. No murders of his own. And for Heroic, they're going into this site. They're going to be doing it four on three. Dupree on seven Ooh. HP. Device actually able to do something in terms of holding the ground here for Astralis. But the bomb will go down, maybe. Never mind. Stopped immediately. Majisk just happens to be hanging out in the catwalk. Now on to bore up. Oh, ooh. I just doesn't know. Borup's closer than he thinks, and he swings, but he falls. And Borup, two shots remaining. 29 seconds, seven health on Dupree, and he doesn't know where he's coming from either. Risking the reload. Dupree can get up into the boost if he wants. Borup trying to flash the cross. Dupree with his shot, and Astralis, by the skin of their teeth, hang on to the round. You know, he was blind, but Dupree shot first. So, and there was an idea there. Yeah, this was crazy. I can't believe Glaive almost gets away with it. Borum doubles back. He looks at the smoke. Then he looks away. Then he looks back again. I think he must have been flashed out too. Everyone was blind at the bottom of A. And despite that, Astralis still come out with a round. Only one orb this time. It's on Dupree over Device. And that makes sense, right? Solo, or not solo B all the time, but you will see him there occasionally. Right now, he's supported by Glaive. Device is just moving around the A ramp and the catwalk, not getting caught as that deep smoke still holds a rogue back. The spam does damage. Tess is taking a beating. And Astralis give it up for now. Oh, Nico definitely had a chance there. Device knows he's lucky to still be alive. And does survive the journey into CT. It's got Astralis a little bit spooked. They've pulled an extra man around towards this A-bomb site. That's Magis now joining Device and S-Tag here. Even Dupree moving away from B and now playing in the elevator room. 
So a very, very heavy presence towards this A site for Astralis and Heroic. Through slowing down, could make Astralis reconsider this, right? They've fallen prone to this kind of A fake into a late B play before. And I think that's why we already see Dupree hedging his bets and moving over towards CT a little more. 25 seconds left as of right now. And so eventually, Heroic, they're going to have to make this move. Creeping down through short side. Now they try and explode in. Down with the burst and a follow-up oh. onto Magis okay. for Tessas. Bomb now looking to go down, and this nade from Glaive, it's going to have to be godlike, but they dodge it. Nico actually baits that out. No. Doesn't get it planted oh. yet, though, and the Molly is now on there as well. Someone's got to get this bomb oh. down, and they're burning to death. Stown oh. deleted, and Astralis, they get that round locked in. It's the Glaive nades that get them there. Nine on the board. And dearie me, heroic. It went from being so smart to so scared in a matter of seconds. Yeah. I, was, I mean, we, we were looking at Tessis just running through there, open the doorway for him. I mean, you could see him running through the scaffold right here. Two unsuspecting victims on his aggression. But you're right, Harry, it's the nades. It's the Molotovs. It's the chaos inside of the site that brings us down to four seconds and with no bomb plant, that's it. Stown, he was on 12 health at four seconds planting. He thinks the Molly's about to burn him. He tries to move. He gets off the plant. The Molly expires. The Molly finishes. He would have got the bomb plant there. Now, Dupree did spam him out, so I imagine he was, would have also got shot regardless, but there was time for it as Stown got off the bomb. That timing of the Molly was unreal, right? Astralis has, still had a full set of util on Glaive as the execute came in. Back to the A site, Heroic. Bad memories, but looking to make him better. Kadian with the AWP, him and an AK are all they've got in this round. The device, he wants to battle back. He hears it rattle off and he re-aggresses on the site. Yeah, the Molotov's gonna create a little bit of a problem, but it doesn't seem like it's big enough of a problem to stop Heroic. They gun it down here in this site. They haven't cleared it out completely. Oh dear. Nico did pick up Device's AWP, and now this is a bit of a problem for Astralis. There's going to be this bomb plant available to Heroic, even with the nades looking to come in. Oh, that could cancel out the plant. Uh, that, oh, again he decided again, again. to fake it again to yeah. try and bait the nades out. That's now twice in a row that it's come back to hurt Heroic. They try and deal with this ramp flank, but Dupree drops the bomb. It's left to Stown, and with wow. no armor, Astralis take a tenth. You put it perfectly, Harry. It's the it's 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 the right call for Herug, but it's actually biting them back, right? Like if they're sticking this plant the first time around, they're getting away with it. When Nico went for it there, Glaive was throwing flashbangs. No one was even there to stop him. A second player gets into position in time on the second time around. And you know, it, it makes sense as to why you want to fake the plant with with what we're seeing in this matchup already. But actually, it's the undoing on some of these rounds. And if you're heroic, you're thinking, man, we're doing everything right. We're getting to the point of plant, and then it's just not really, it's not really happening for us. Woo. And Device. this is where things get a bit, nice. a bit wild, right? Like, Astralis are believing again, and with good reason. And you can see the pressure getting to heroic. I think that's very much what these last few rounds kind of tell the story of, right? Is Astralis grinding their way back into this game, and heroic trying to make the right calls, but in doing so, giving Astralis even more of an edge. And now their money is at breaking point. And so that can be Astralis well and truly back into this game if they pick this round up and already sat in a five on three. It's going to leave Heroic with this mid push and that is it. Yeah, they've already cleared out bottom B and they have re-aggressing players up on that A site. It's about to all be made so clear for Astralis. Glaive sees the jump and Device is here with the AWP as well for the swing. He's got Stown gone. Tess has spanned through the box and another flawless round for Astralis. They start to build, not just in scoreline, but also in money as well. And that is even bigger of a worry for Heroic. It's going to take some rounds to crunch back that economy. The AWP coming to life again for Device. He's got a decent spawn back for an AP if he wants to do it once more. And now it's Heroic's chance. We had two T timeouts in the first half for Astralis as they tried to piece rounds together. Heroic in a bit of a similar spot. They may have found that 4-0 lead at the start of the half off the back of their pistol round, but since that point, Astralis have done the same right back. And just to confirm, I'm not seeing any pineapples on Chad Burchill's pizza. So I suppose all is right in the world still. You got a man like that from the upside down. Never really know what he might be up to. A 
for us. We know what Heroic are up to on these pistols. And that's just about anything that they can, because the, the momentum has shifted tremendously in this matchup. Astralis. <laughs> They're not stopping anytime soon, especially with Kadian going down that early in the round. Device with the opening kill and the AWP. Clockwork. Yeah. He's been doing doing it time and time again. And the key this time around was it was the bomb that gets dropped. And so info for Astralis, they know what to expect. Device has posted up for yet another kill. Doesn't want to go too far forward, even though he can get a shot. Tessus could trade Device very quick and backs out alive. Pistols getting removed one by one here for Heroic. And now they're going to try and group and go together. Oh, but Device, another three in the round. He does need some support from S-Tag over at short. He could stop the bomb and a bomb plant there for Heroic. They'll take that, man. Like that, that was a pretty dire round once they lose the first three to Device. S-Tag gives them the time to get that bomb down, trying to first deal with the guy up on top of the boxes. Let's that plant come in. 12 on the board for Astralis, but the extra cash injection yeah. from that bomb going to mean that Heroic have everything they need moving into this next round. And you're, you're probably wondering, well, well you know, S-Tag, why don't you just shoot the guy that was planting and stop the plant? No, you want to take the guy that's still in the fight. You want to take him out first. Yeah. And that's pretty obvious. It's pretty apparent. He almost had the transfer to stop the bomb uh, in time. It's just a, a couple of shots missed in the spray and Heroic, they get the bonus money, right? They still would have been able to buy regardless, but that has really put everything together for this T side. Looking back for another gun round. Will they go back towards A, which has been their undoing in some of these bomb plant scenarios? Below B is Nico. He slowed down in the second half, but this would be a good time to hit the gas again. Eating a nade is Glaive. Two in B for Astralis. And they've got all the A ramp control as well. And meanwhile, Magist is even pushing middle. He's seen the grenade from Stown, and the flash may be good, but it comes in late. Magist with the kill, and somehow still stands strong. Astralis, two per sight. Heroic backing out of B now, and bringing the bomb towards ramp. Yeah, for Heroic, this is a must have round. Yeah, they've been leading all game. If they want to keep the lead, it's on this. Woo. Yeah, device takes a shot, drops a Molotov off at the scaffold. You don't have to worry about that for the time being. And I guess getting shot through the wall right there feels pretty not good. Uh-oh. Oh, Dupree is back here, but there's also Glaive to draw attention away over in mid. Device, meanwhile, continuing to lock down the A side of the map, and Nico saw Glaive. Dupree uses that to his advantage and just waits ever so patiently. Now Smoke to be allowed to cross out oh. and in with another for Dupree. They finally come B, and he's so happy about it. Two kills, cementing a 13th, the equalizer for Astralis. And you think about the fact that this game was 9-1 at one point in time in favor of Heroic. Yeah, it looked pretty dominating on the first half, right? You think a totally different scoreline. It's almost like a brand new game here in the second half. Astralis reinvigorated. Yeah, 13-6. This is seven rounds in a row now for Astralis. They are just building, and there's no reason to believe that they won't find another with a lack of bomb plant for Heroic. Depends how they're going to spread the money, right? They could actually buy. There was a little bit of spare cash. We'll see how they decide to spread it around or whether it will just be pistol armor. But right now, Astralis, man, they are pulling it all the way back on a map that they even lost recently to Heroic. It's not going to be an eco, though. AWP is there, and actually the money is pretty decent for Heroic, right? There was some saved cash. They use it for the AWP. Galil on Stown, but enough util to get things going. What is the answer, though, for Heroic? Astralis near the end of their first half. They found solutions in taking mid in the mid round. Heroic did just try and do that with Stown, getting killed by Magis' re-aggression. And Astralis have not been fearful of, of doing that, right? Trying to get that information. When Heroic aren't on A, Astralis are often pushing towards the ramp and figuring that one out early. Never feel, uh, falling away from these double B setups. And so if Heroic go for a rush here, they could be walking into the stack. Oh, Dupree taking a peek. Didn't see that Nico had already crossed. Now this bottom B control coming in for Heroic, but what are they going to do with it? That's one of the big questions. It's a pretty horrible angle to try and funnel your way up. 
And so they won't. They, they they make their presence known here at the bottom of B and now go back to this slow creeping ramp control a little bit later in the round. S-Tag is going to be here on the sandbags, but with a Molotov on Kadian, currently the man at the back of ramp, he's already got it out. He's ready. He's like, I'm Molly in these sandbags and there's no one that can get in my way. There's that Molotov raining over. And now it's like, huh, I wonder if there's a guy there. And there's no more damaging utility for Heroic to even get him out, so they have to respect the smoke for now. Yeah, there's a few key fights about to come up, right? One of them being this duel between the... Uh, I was going to say the short side players, but Device actually just moved off the angle. And with Glaive now removing Bora at B, that's actually kept more players for Astralis over towards that B site. That's going to help Heroic out as they look to move in. They do still have to bear this sandbag position in mind, and they haven't been able to flush S-Tag out yet. Device in with one, cancelled out by Tessez. But this sandbags player just not giving anything to Heroic. This bomb is still on Cadian's back at ramp, and he's not even looking into the site. Tessez is trying to keep it all under control, but Cadian needs to get here, and he's got to get here and now there's so little time left. Smoke in the hands of Astralis oh. as well. Nothing for Cadian to cross. He does get into the site, but no time for the plot. And it's going to be around for Astralis. Getting away with the kill after time as well. So ruining Heroic's money up against 14. Yeah. What a turnaround from Astralis. You go, let's look at this right here, right now. We see Astralis back in the game. Obviously, numbers will say that. But as far as showing up on Vertigo, how you feel? Yeah, that's great, right? They've, there's been complaints about this map for players like Dupree, right? We know he's not happy with it. We know that Astralis, uh, you know, you've got to play it, especially with the Insta Banner Mirage. You can't afford to drop any more. And the fact that Heroic wrecked them on this map the other day and have been taking some serious names on Vertigo gives all the more credit to Astralis here if they can do this and certainly looks to be the case. Device pulled back on short in the previous round to line up a smoke for S-Tag, right? They're expecting a second Molotov on the sandbags. That puts Device in a great position to do damage. This time he's caught out with one kill at least, but Heroic immediately run him down with the pistols. That's a gun given over and the AWP of all weapons. Yeah, but you can still, you, you can see how Heroic are just hesitant. They're just hard charging up this ramp regardless of the advantage they found themselves in there. Yeah, it looks like Dupree is, is going to be the guy to keep an eye on right now as they've left this ramp side. Glaive actually aggressed over at top ramp, and that's given Astralis an early hint as to what's going down. Now, these rotations are going to be heard by KD in the middle, and that might make the rest of Heroic decide to pick up the pace a bit here. Dupree, this entire round just might fall onto the results of him here at the B stairs. Nothing more than a bit of damage to open up, but there's his first kill. Can he get away? He does. Okay. Disappearing through the smoke. The AWP of Nico dropped and Stown, the last man left alive. A 1v4 turned 1v3 that he just can't get away with. And it's 15 on the board. Map point for Astralis. Astralis bailed Dupree out there so hard, right? Like, he gets away first with Nico missing the orb shot on that close boost. But then someone just smokes Dupree and he sits in it and sprays, even running back to the site. Great teamwork, great utility, as we often know for Astralis. And what a crazy climb back into this game for them. 13 to 6 at one point for Heroic. It has been flawless for Astralis since that point. They're looking for 10 rounds in a row and they might just find it. Yeah, you look at a player like Nico who you know, pretty much put his heart and soul into the series there at the very beginning, but you can only do so much. And the answer from Heroic here on map point is to rush middle. It's not gone well at all. Stown, the last one to fall. Technina coming to life, and so will we. Right after this break, ladies and gentlemen, Astralis rallying back and picking up the first map of this series. We're going to overpass next. You're watching the ESL Pro League Season 12 Playoffs.